Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Flaps and I want to try and take you through everything there is to know about H1Z1. Starting with the basics, going right through. So um, there's going to be a lot of videos in this series rather than doing just one big video because that would take days and weeks. I'm just going to do small videos in order and then put them all into the same folder on my channel so you'll be able to see them all in the channel in the order that you should be watching them so you can start with the basics of crafting a bow and a satchel and a wooden bow uh, making a backpack for yourself uh, different ways of combat and well we'll see what we get to we'll pro I'll probably find things that I didn't even know I was going to show on these two tutorials. So let's get started. First of all, we well I'll pick a, a new server so that we know we're starting right from the beginning. And one that's medium should be fine. So this Stuttgart EU. So it's best to pick the one that's in your well closest to where you live and that way you'll have the least amount of lag. We'll put in our name join server. Servers are quite good with H1Z1. They usually get you in quite fast. So as soon as we get in we want to make a satchel as soon as possible so that then we can carry a lot more stuff straight off the bat so I look around no one's gonna kill me no zombies now to make a satchel so we unpack get these things out of the jeans and the top so that we can shred them as soon as we shred We've got to shred both of them so that we've got, because at the moment we've only got small four scraps of cloth. Now we've got eight. And I think for a satchel, so you go to discovery um, and then you put what you want in your discovery to discover a new item. So now I've discovered a satchel. Now a satchel, if you click on it, shows you how much cloth you need. So we need six scraps of cloth. So I just click craft and then we'll end up with two scraps of cloth left. Now this is something new in the new one of the new updates. You've got this uh, hand-drawn map. Now all you have to do is press M and you've got a nice little map which a lot of people won't know yet because it's only just been implemented in the last week or two and it means that you can literally and I it take, does take one slot up, bulk one, but I think it's worth it to have it because it means you don't have to go out of your game to check Google to find your map and all that sort of stuff. So it is really handy to have. You want to find a, or make a compass or find a compass as soon as possible. So now that we've got the satchel, we can go, we can collect berries because they're your most basic source of food and water. They're not really uh, water, but fluid. So, oh well, actually, it's called hydration down there in the bottom right. If you want to bring up this little um, notification down in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you just press F, and see that brings it takes it away. If you want to bring it back up, press F again, and that way you can see how I prefer to have it up all the time because I like to check my hydration. Now. The thing you want to find really fast are sticks because if you haven't got a bow you're pretty defenseless. Fists aren't that good in this game against zombies. You're going to get hit by the zombie quite a few times and you're going to have to use your bandages and that's not not something you want. So let's usually just run. I'd like to run in third person when I'm running around. When you're in combat most of the time it's better to go into first person so that you can aim a lot better because as you can see the crosshair 
that little white dot in the middle of the screen is very small and it's quite hard to get that on people but when you're in first person you can actually see where the guns and bow and arrows and things are aiming now we're not having much usually you get spawned quite close to sticks so we'll just keep picking berries up on our way and am I seeing any sticks yet? Nope, still just berry bushes. Now we've got 32 so far. I think we've got enough berries for now. So I'm just going to keep running into the trees. Now see up there, those sort of trees and forest up there are more likely to have sticks. So we're going to run up there now. Now the slow moving zombies are pretty okay. You don't have to worry too much about them because you can outrun them really easy. But the fast moving ones, they'll chase you for a long, long time. So it's best not to catch their attention until if once you've got a bow, then the zombies aren't too bad because as long as you're good at taking them out. It usually takes three shots, uh, but if you're good with hitting them in the head, one shot and they're down. And that's one of the best ways to loot in, this, in the beginning of this game, so that you don't have to go into the really populated places like Pleasant Vale and places like that, and Cranberry. That's where usually where all the people with guns and stuff are, so if you want to spend some time surviving and building up your characters weapons and loot then you can just stick to killing zombies in the beginning and you'll find they drop if they're a player that's turned into a zombie they'll drop quite a bit of loot so as you can see I was right and we've got some sticks right up ahead so these little sort of, it's almost like bamboo next to the big trees. I'm just going to go into my settings and turn up my sound a little bit. Cause sometimes it gets glitched. Yeah, see, it was on 100 but it wasn't giving me my full sound. Okay, so here we are, we've got some sticks, so we just do the same thing. You just press E, unless you've changed the key to something else, which you can do key binding now, which is fantastic, because the first few weeks of this game being out, you couldn't bind keys to the places you wanted them. So I've actually bound the talk key to a different one, because I hate having to press my middle mouse button while I'm in gunfights and things, when I want to talk to players, or shout abuse at them while, I'm, while they're trying to kill me. So now when you've got enough sticks, Then you can go to the discovery and discover and you've got wooden arrows discovered. Now to craft a bow, now that's probably something I should have done before. Rather than crafting the bandage, I should have kept those scraps of cloth and crafted a bow with it. Because now if I go to discovery, I can't actually craft anything. So the only way to get cloth is to actually go and loot something. Now, so that I don't have to run a long, long way, I'm going to show you how to do something else now. We're going to type in respawn <coughs> and that will kill your character and you'll respawn and now we can go through all that again now I'll probably skip a few of these things for you so you don't have to watch me doing things over and over again so that we can get to the next tutorial but the next tutorial we want is a basic bow so we're going to do the whole thing again shred now I think we might have a wolf on our tail. So we're going to have to get that bow crafted pretty soon if we're going to defend ourselves. So 
here we go. Here's some sticks. Grab the sticks. Okay, we've got enough sticks now. Let's see if we can craft it before it gets to us. So we got the bow discovered. Now I might have to fight this thing with my fists if he gets too close. Let's do the bow. Uh, okay, he's already in this. So now we get our bow out. And he's down. That's how simple it is to get your bow and start defending yourself. Now this is one of those fast zombies I was telling you about, which I'm not very happy about because I don't have an arrow, so I can't actually fight him yet. I'm going to have to hope that I can craft an arrow in time before he gets here. Okay, we got it crafted. But we've got two fast zombies on our tail. So in the beginning it's a bit tricky. Especially when you've got a couple of zombies on your tail. They can actually be quite a big threat. So I'm just going to run a little bit further. Craft a few more arrows. Now don't tell me. I've got another wolf on my tail. Now this very rarely happens. Especially right in the beginning. So. And I'm even playing with this deer at the same time. He's probably trying to get away from the wolf at the same time. Now, you can never tell if the zombies are going for the wolves or the deers or whatever. Okay, let's get this thing. And I miss his head. See, it's important that you get them in the head. Now I can get my arrow back there. Now while we're waiting for these zombies to come, let's get some more arrows. Now I can hear a zombie quite close. There he is. Okay, forget it is very nice and it's quite satisfying when you get them in the head uh, let's get a few more arrows see and as you can see I pop straight into first person view when I want to take out the zombies let's craft another arrow as soon as you've got a few arrows you set. Okay, so occasionally you're going to miss. You're going to miss the head. Okay, and that's what I was telling you about before. The loot. In the beginning, let's have a look. Now, this one in fact, oh my goodness, how many zombies have we got here? Right. This is a few too many zombies for my liking. As you can see, I'm running out of arrows again. And we've got another wolf. I think they might have updated <laughs> quite a bit because Last time I was playing there wasn't nearly as much of this happening. I have got minor bleeding. So theoretically my life... This is ridiculous now. I might in fact get killed. Okay, this is good. The zombies started attacking the wolf so it gives us time to bandage up. Okay. 
this is a little bit stressful now. Let's see if we can get some more arrows. Nope. They've actually made surviving in this game a lot more difficult, which is quite fun really, because even before you see another player, which they're the most dangerous because if it's if they're good at the game they are going to uh, give you a good fight so but even before you find a player you got to fight with these uh, zombies okay so we've crafted a bow we've crafted a satchel once we've healed up I will be there we go okay so we survived we've got a few arrows now actually let's craft a few more arrows now these are some good little things about the menu you can do I'm just gonna hide behind this tree so no zombies see me in the menu Okay, this is going to be a little tutorial on navigating your menu. Up here, inventory item containers, you can click that and change it to list view, which I don't like very much. You can change it to items only, which is my preferred method because it's nice to see the big pictures and you know what you're looking at. You don't need the words two columns or three columns. Now I prefer the icons only. That's my preferred view there. Now you can see them, you can't see them. You literally just drag things around. Okay, I'm going to show you some more menu in a minute. I better don't take out this zombie. Okay, and we've got him. And more loot. Now this guy, he had some nice sliced beets. Now okay, let's get back into the menu. So a few more things about the menu. Here you've got character layout. Now these you can hold up to three items in your hands so that they don't use space in your backpack and stuff. Okay. Let's kill some more zombies. Oh, this is funny. Trying to do a tutorial and I'm getting owned by zombies. This should be entitled How to Get Taken Out by Zombies. Well, at least it gives you some practice. Oh, now that was very nice. As you can see, I just found a blue backpack. Now, this is interesting. They shraff now as well. They're getting so interesting. Because before, they would only come right at you. But now they straff around. Okay, I've never seen this many zombies at once. Okay, this is this is very funny. I, I it's actually making the game really interesting right in the beginning to survive. It's like the zombies can smell me or something. It's not usually uh, the, the updates that they've done on this game are fantastic. It's actually turning it into a zombie game. Before it was like almost like DayZ, where the only thing that would give you a threat were other players. Um, but now, the zombies are actually a threat. Look at them all. They're all enclosing in on me. So I think my best bet now is to find civilization and find a gun. And then I can show you some more menu options. Look at them all coming down for me. This is, this is quite fun. Okay, now what I need, if you run out of arrows, you really are 
Oh, my God. Oh, 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 he got close then. Now, look, he runs around as well. He doesn't, doesn't just run straight towards me. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, God, where's this one coming from? Okay, look, good. He's, he's lost my scent now. In the past, if you stayed still, it wasn't a problem. But it's starting to... It, it seems to me like the more you move around, the better. Because if you stay in one place for too long, it's almost like they can smell you and sense you and they all come towards you. So This is a very... This game, every time I play it, it's getting better. Okay, let's craft some more arrows. I really need more arrows. Now, as you can see, I've clicked crafting. Now, one good thing about this button is you can click craftable weapons only, and it means you've got less to click in if you're having a problem finding, because once you get the discover a lot of things, this can be a scrollable wheel, and it can take a while to find what you're looking for, but if you go to craftable items only, you only have to look at the ones that you can actually, you've actually got the materials for, which is great. Uh, now, here, filters, you can go to campfire and cooking, furnaces, uh, housing, sub components, that's interesting, survival, and weapons. So we're on weapons at the moment. So it can make all the difference because being able to get that arrow crafted more quickly or that bow that's just broken and craft another one quickly can really make all the difference in your survival. Now thinking of that, I better patch up again. When you're doing the bandages, just make sure you let your, um, your life bar go up the full 10% because each bandage or gorse will give you 10% but if you use it before it's gone up 10% and you use another one if you think oh I want to heal up quicker you won't it just means you've wasted one and it still only goes up the amount from when you click on it so it's best to wait until it's gone up 10% then use another one as you can see my food and stuff's going down so I better eat a little bit but yeah basically these uh, tutorials I want to make the most comprehensive set of tutorials I can all in the same place because I've seen a lot of others on the internet a lot of other tutorial videos and they're great but most of them are one-offs or one here and one there it's not a whole heap everything to do all in one place so that's what I'm going to try and try and achieve for you anyone that wants to just have everything in one place and just go from beginning to end with me and then by the time you finish this you'll know everything there is needed all the basics so that you can go out there and survive okay great here comes some more zombies now I've heard about heat signatures in this game. The more activity you do, the more you run, the more you shoot your bow. The, oh, look at that, strafing again. The bigger your heat signature is, which means... Oh, bummer. Uh, if your heat signature is bigger, you attract more zombies. That's basically what they've been trying to say here. So, I'm going to leave the tutorial there, and we're going to come back and get back to some more. Next time we'll be getting on to, hopefully, a wooden bow, maybe a, a better backpack to craft, and, well, there'll be a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, proper looting, looting of actual houses, and the basics of survival when you want to use your map, you still need a compass to know where you're going which is fantastic. So you just press M for map and that way we can find where we need to go or if you've got friends that you need to find. Okay, logging out. The good thing about logging out is if you click log out, you're actually in the area while you're logging out. Once the screen goes black, you're actually logged out. I can still shoot. I can still defend myself. So that's a really good plus. 
something that I don't like about some of the other survival games are you spawn out but your character's still left there vulnerable for people and zombies and things to kill while you're out of the game which is a bit stupid and it's the same when you spawn into some of them you'll spawn in but you won't be there and your character's just standing there vulnerable but in this game if you can see you know that you can defend yourself and as soon as you can't see, you know you've spawned out, which is great. Okay, uh, we'll leave it there for that first uh, section of tutorials. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, see you later.